It's a brand new month and that means it's time to share my October sewing plans. This month has been a lot more difficult deciding what to make than usual. Keep watching to find out what held me up and what I learned about myself during the planning process. It just might help you too. Coming up with what to make in October was difficult for a variety of reasons. Uh, the number one being that I'm in a major allergy situation. I was out of town for a conference and came back to full-blown ragweed explosion here in Houston. And I've just had horrible, horrible allergies the past few days. I'm finally starting to feel better and had enough energy to come up with a plan but my my voice sounds weird so apologies and uh, my right ear is still blocked but i'm i'm here to hang out today and to share my plans if we haven't met before i'm tony and this is so so lounge so october in texas is kind of weird because it's not like other parts of the country where it's actually cold and the leaves have started changing colors um, we have a lot of oak trees here and they just don't change colors. So um, they're, they're live oaks. So they're a little different from oak trees in the Northeast or Midwest, but um, it has cooled off a tiny bit. So we are no longer in the hundreds. We are now in the eighties and low nineties, which is the beginning of fall down here. So because of that, um, the days are getting longer are shorter and um you know it starts to feel a little bit like fall like that's the signal for me like oh it feels like fall it's only in the 80s and i kind of wanted to start sewing with some fabrics that were a little bit more fall like flannel or fleece and start making some things for when the weather does actually start changing hopefully next month um but i don't have any of those fabrics so I did go through my patterns and find some patterns that I like and I'm going to have to go get some fabric to go with them, but that'll be an upcoming video. So we will go shopping. One thing I decided that I didn't definitely want to make is this McCall's pattern. It's 7022 and I'm going to make it in like some kind of a cute plaid, um, maybe a flannel, maybe a poly wool blend. I'm not sure what I'm going to find, but I definitely know I want to go with a plaid because I think this looks really cute. This is a pleated skirt, so there's little pleats on the sides. And I did previously make this skirt in view A, I believe, or maybe E. I think it was E. And I made it back in August right before I went to the East Coast. It's a super cute, um, very full skirt. It has a lowered waist because it has that yoke, which I like because I don't like these high-waisted trends we're seeing. So that was one bonus of this pattern. It did sew up really quickly and I thought it would be fun to make it in the pleated skirt version and use some fall fabrics and then that way I can keep wearing it into the fall. Um, this one I made out of this cotton. Uh, this is a Japanese fabric and it's just um, it's really great for summer but not really heavy enough for fall. So that's definitely one thing I want to make. This skirt was fast. Um, when I sewed it, it took like two days. I had to let it hang because it's on the bias. I'm thinking I can crank this out in a day or two. So this is definitely something I can achieve in the next few weeks. Moving on, I have been wanting to make some flannel pajama pants for a while. And I went through my patterns and I found this McCall's. Um, this is 8063. It is a, um, it's like a short kind of a capri length and then kind of a longer pajama length. The fabrics that are suggested are um, cotton blends, linen, chambray, chalet, and denim. But I think you could make this out of a lightweight flannel or flannelette. And um, I think that would be cute for the fall. My sister did say she wants some pajamas, but she wants me to put elastic in the hem so that they stay put while she sleeps. So that's something to consider. This is the only pattern I had that was even similar to pajamas. So may use this pattern um, if, if I can make the fabric work. Um, it's just a drawstring, super easy. This is a level one pattern. So it's great if you were just getting back into sewing. And um, I think that'll be super easy to whip up too because it's, it's just basic. So I'm optimistic we can get these two done. 
I will probably use this pattern. So that is some good news. One other thing I want to make in flannel, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to do it this month is I kind of wanted to make an oversized flannel shirt for my boyfriend. He's going camping at the end of the month. And I thought it'd be nice to, to send a nice heavyweight uh, flannel shirt with him. This is the only pattern I have that would kind of be an oversized um, shirt. This is um, from PH7 Patterns. I got this with my uh, edition of a sewing magazine, British sewing magazine that I picked up. And I don't love the instructions. They're a little vague in parts. And, you know, with this allergy fog, I'm, I'm not thinking real clearly. And I just want something I can whip up. And this does not seem like a whip up kind of pattern. But this is kind of the idea, um, which maybe I will have time for that. I'm going to be looking for another pattern. So just kind of to give you guys an idea, maybe this will happen. Maybe it'll get pushed to next month. We shall see. But that was my other thought on using uh, flannel. Moving on to fleecy fabrics. And I, there's so many different types of fleece out there that I'm not even sure um, what would be exactly what I want. So I'm just going to go look. I know it is they're having a big fleece aroma or fleece tastic or some kind of something um, at my local store. So I'm going to go check that out. And there are really good sales happening right now on these fall fabrics. So check out your local stores and see if you can score any deals. That is what I'm hoping for. So these are a couple of patterns I found. It's going to depend on what kind of fabric I find and whether or not just which one I'm going to make. I'm leaning towards this one. This is another McCall's pattern. This is 8143. This is a level two learn to sew pattern. So it should once again be pretty quick to put together. Now the fun about this one is it does have a partial zipper um, that comes down the front. I am thinking of just making it in view B, which is just kind of a basic sporty look. Um, there is elastic on the bottom, which I'm probably not going to do, and elastic on the wrists. I have not sewn a fleece jacket. I buy a lot of these types of jackets. Um, back in the day, I used to have several from Old Navy, um, which have gone on to fleecy heaven. But it was, they were always really comfortable. It's something that's just a great staple, especially here where, you know, you can go from, you know, having nice weather to then getting cold all of a sudden. It's weird things happen in Texas. But, um, this one I'm thinking of is making B. I don't know if I'm going to make it in a solid or a print. That remains to be seen, but I think this will be a, a cute jacket. It will be fun to sew on fleece and to try out some new tips. And later this month, I will be doing a video on tips for sewing the fleece. So keep a lookout for that. The other pattern that I found for fleece that I really like, it's a little bit dressier fleecy. Um, so this one has like a gathered cuff and then kind of a full sleeve. This is McCall's um, 11296. They also have one with more of a bell sleeve. I thought this would be really pretty if I can find a nice soft knit. Um, this is a two-way stretch knit cotton knit, sweater knit, velour, or velvet is what is suggested for this pattern. So I think a very lightweight um, fleece might work or a, if I can find a pretty velour, that would be really nice um, to just make it a little bit dressier. This might be something to consider for Thanksgiving if it's actually cold enough to wear fleece at Thanksgiving this year. We shall see. Last year it was in the um, high 80s, so not so much. But so these are my two fleece patterns, both McCall's again, and I will see what I can find to make them. Um, I definitely can get one of them in for sure. Um, probably this one's going to be the definite because I know I will find fabric for it. And then this is a maybe, once again, might get pushed to a little bit later in the year. The last project that I plan to make is going to be using this vintage Vogue pattern. Now the fabric I'm using is really what has me excited. This is some Alexander Henry fabric. It is called My Favorite Haunts and it is basically travel, um, travel trunk, like steamer trunk stickers. 
Um, that's kind of the inspiration behind it, but it's all kinds of spooky places. So you've got um, Hotel von Frankenstein in Germany and Frankenstein's over here. You have Transylvania with Dracula and his lovely bride. You have Castle Dracula up here. There's Moonlit Nights at Talbot's Lodge in London with the Wolfman. It's really fun, colorful fabric. I did specifically buy this to make for something for Halloween. Now, if you weren't aware, Halloween is on a Monday this year, which means that I can actually make a suit to wear to court. For those of you who don't know, I'm a lawyer when I'm not sewing. And I practice in traffic court, which is a lot more casual than district court. So I still wear a suit, but I can embrace the holiday with a suit in this kind of fabric. Now, that brings me back to my pattern of choice, Vogue 1812, which was printed in 1996. Now, funny story about this pattern, um, this jacket with these pants is the very first actual garment that I sewed back in the day, back in university, and I didn't use this exact pattern because I chose one that was actually my size, not knowing that patterns aren't the same size as the clothes you actually wear. So my jacket and pants were too small. I never actually got to wear them, but they did turn out decently, primarily thanks to help from my grandma. So um, I wanted to make this pattern again. I knew I really liked this pattern. So thankfully I bought it in a bigger size back in the day. So I've had this and carted it around with me for several years. And I am going to be making um, C and E, which is a sleeveless top that buttons up the back and an A-line skirt. Both of these are lined, but this is an easy pattern from Vogue. So I'm optimistic that I will be able to get it done. I mean, I have to get it done by the 31st. There's really no option. So since none of my other patterns are terribly complicated, I'm feeling good that I can get this done in time to wear it and celebrate. So I'm gonna be wearing a black jacket with this. I'm sure I have some cute booties or something that would um, accent its awesomeness and some cute tights. So that's what we're gonna be going with. And this is what I'm most excited about making this coming month. One thing I realized while I was going through the process of planning my makes for October was that I do a lot better planning when I have fabric to work with. Now, think about last month's projects. I made three jackets in three weeks. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had a deadline, I had fabric. And the thing about those fabrics is that I've actually had them for quite a while and I was just waiting to find the right patterns and the motivation to get them made. So it was very easy for me to do that. Now, this month I didn't have any fleece or flannel fabrics, but I did have this fantastic Halloween fabric. So I'm really pumped to get that made because I can already see it coming together. Whereas the other pieces are kind of like, okay, I'm gonna make something, it's gonna look awesome, but I'm just not super excited yet because I don't have the fabric in hand. So good news, bad news, sometimes it's easier to get excited about sewing when you already have the fabric which means you probably need to have a fabric stash to refer back to. And if you don't, it's always a good excuse to go shopping. So keep watching for upcoming video of shopping for fall fabrics, and I'll see you there. Don't go, there's another great video coming up next. You're definitely gonna wanna watch this one.